Franny, we're celebrating 30 years of the, the Premier League. It seems to have absolutely flown by that time. Um, you were part of Southampton's first ever Premier League game in 1992. What are, what are your memories of, of that day? Well, as you say, it's a long time ago, so trying to recall it in detail is, is a little bit difficult. But yeah, it, just remember it being a, a real big change. You know, clearly the, the sort of broadcasting side of it and, you know, live games going on television and money starting to come into the sport in a bigger way uh, was a real sort of interesting and, and different shift from where it had been up to that point. But yeah, from a player's perspective, it was very exciting. You know, I was still sort of in the relatively young years of my career personally so it was like still trying to to be part of the team and playing on a regular basis and as you say I think I was fortunate enough to be in the starting lineup for that opening campaign for the inaugural sort of Premier League season and uh, yeah one when you look back on it it's something you, you, you're pretty proud of to be part of. Yeah football is football and, and the game itself obviously didn't change but was there a sense in the dressing room that this was the start of a, a big change in English football? All of a sudden it seemed like the cameras and interviews and things like that. There was cameras in places where you weren't used to seeing them, and uh, that that took a little bit of getting used to. You know, yeah, it was a, it was a, a very interesting and exciting time of uh, the, the 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 sport, but also the club and as a player as well on every angle. You went on to make 243 Premier League appearances in the end. What are some of your kind of standout memories, if you like, from over that time? Wow, blimey, so many. My goal was probably included in that, that run somewhere. It probably came many years later. But uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, likening it to the Premier League and the changes that we had, I think it was, uh, you know, even down to things like your names on, on the back of the shirts and things like that coming in, which was different from before. Um, almost seeing a, I think I may have played in the, the game where uh, I think it was Chelsea played a, a full starting 11 that didn't include a a British player or a homegrown player. Um, so, you know, we saw those differences in like players from around the globe and managers starting to come into the sport, which was very different from the very first count, uh, season. So, yeah, lots of changes, lots of differences, but in so many ways, in a, in a positive way. Being Southampton born and bred, and I know this was a club that you always wanted to play for, how proud are you to have done that, but done it in the Premier League as well? See myself as very very fortunate you know person to be able to go on and you know play so many games for the club but to stay at one club for so many years as well never had said it many times before you know never ever wanted to leave so to be able to go through my career and start and retire at my hometown club was incredible uh, you know just just seeing this the, the transition as well when we went from playing at the Dell when it went all-seater to be in a 15,000 capacity stadium, to move in here to St Mary's, 32,000 spectators here and supporters and, and a, 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 an ultra-modern stadium to play in was a little bit of a transition for us at the time as players and as a squad and a club as a whole. But, you know, we've, we soon settled into our surroundings and it's been a wonderful home ever since. And beyond your playing days as well, the, the Premier League's still playing a, a massive part in, in your life now with, with the work that you do. So it, the Premier League's been, been central of your life for, for 30 years. Yeah, most definitely. You know, I, I work partly now, not just as a, a speaker, but also as a, a pundit. And to have that connection with the sport beyond my playing days is, is brilliant. You know, I'm, I'm ambassador here at the, the club and Saints Foundation. And that's something that I'm you know, very thrilled to, to be a part of. Um, makes me feel extremely proud and humble to, to have that connection with the club way beyond my playing days. And I, th I think that, that connection and that, that love and bond for the club is, will, will never, ever leave me. And uh, I've, I've seen how it's evolved over the years from the humble beginnings and those sort of early sort of signs of, you know, the football club, the Premier League and how it sort of interacts with the, the, the local community is... Yeah, it's, it's such a powerful thing and uh, I've, I've been very proud to be a part of that. And of course, many of those programmes that the Foundation run are, are funded by the Premier League. Yeah, the, the money makes such a difference, you know, that, that comes into the club. You know, Saints Foundation then, can then go to primary schools for young children. There's programmes where they can go out, support PE programmes, maths and English. There's members of the Saints Foundation team that will go out and support the teachers in the schools. Uh, you know teenagers that are struggling mainstream education there'll be support for them as well and then outside of the school hours there's the kicks campaigns where you know it's getting out and supporting those youngsters again in the community that gives them a safe environment just to come together and know that they can have some sort of connection with the community but also the football club.
And, and why is it important, do you think, that the Premier League gives back to, to communities? It's not all about, obviously, the, the football that we watch. The, the communities are really at the centre of a lot of it too. Most definitely. And, and I think that's, that's always important to, to remember. You know, it's, it's quite clear probably all of us and everyone has a view on the money that's in the sport now and where it goes. And um, clearly there's this, the other side at times where you think there's a huge amount of money going to fantastic causes as well. It's, um, it's, it's, it's important, it's needed, I think, uh, to filter through that pyramid and to get out into local communities through you know, the likes of Saints Foundation and many others. Uh, it's it's going to have an impact on, and we're seeing it already, already here in Southampton and you know, people involved with Saints Foundation, that you know, the impact it's having, the positive impact on their lives. And you know, if we can look further ahead into the future, there's going to be people turning around and saying, it was through my connection with Saints Foundation, Samson Football Club, and money that's come in through the Premier League that has made a difference to their lives.